smacked. Well, Chris, it's called getting smacked. Three, two, one. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the latest episode of the Smack Talk podcast. Today, I'm joined by a wonderful guest, none other than Mr. Ian Thompson. And there's only one place we can start this. Oh, yeah. Lime, Limelight Show. Okay. Yeah, why not? Yeah. 7th of April, <laughs> I think. Suited and no, booted. Now you can all turn off. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's what we need all to right, get thanks into. for having me on. <laughs> no, but yeah, you're doing the Limelight Show with Johnny. Yes. Uh, 7th of April. I was really interested in the fact that you just did a double header show. Yeah. What was the thinking behind that? Johnny just asked me if I wanted to do a show with him, and I was like, yeah. yep. So we don't know what the format is, or right, okay. anything, as yet. We just uh, agreed to sort of split the bill, mm -hmm. and uh, see that's what important. happens. That's the important bit, isn't it? Like? Yeah. <laughs> so Johnny's like, all sort of one-liners, mm -hmm. so I don't think he could do like a full hour That's on the, his own. Yeah, because I was going into it with him, and I was like, I love the fact that you've done 30 minutes, people's attention span, because I'm all into that sort of side of stuff, like people don't like the hours anymore, and da 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 and then he's like, I just don't think I could do an hour of writing. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, oh yeah, okay, that's pretty simple then. Well, funny, I like I did a show in the Sunflower, You Love It, in November, mm -hmm. and I thought it would be, I didn't think I would be capable of doing an hour. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd do like 45 minutes max, but uh, it was over an hour in the end. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Was that your first hour ever? Yep. First, oh, right, first time I'd done a show. So I was asked to do one before the pandemic, but I didn't feel that like I was kind of ready or had enough material mm -hmm. even to do half an hour back then really yeah so um that would have been 2019 or 2018 can't remember okay but uh yeah it was just like as soon as gigs start started happening again like mm -hmm. last year it was just like i need to try and get my own show done as soon as yeah. i can and when did you start stand up when was uh 2017 but yeah it's weird we were talking about this in the drive back from Derry last night you know you can't really say I've been doing it for five years or whatever. Because this is my problem. The, but there's some people that have been doing it for, you know, 10 years, but have done 20 gigs. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so, um, yeah, it started in 2017, but then there was over two years where there wasn't any gigs because yeah. of the pandemic. And on one stage, it wasn't well. Like, so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know what the answer to that question is. Really. <laughs> That's exactly what happened to me. I had two gigs and then pff, world ended. And I was, uh -huh. like, I was like, you can't say I've been doing it for two years and uh, I've done two gigs exactly it makes no sense so I just I just counted from I basically, if anyone asked you it was basically from the pandemic end of yeah. the started because you can't really count them all the time I actually like, heard Jimmy Carr on a podcast saying like as comedians it's like pilots you know pilots mm -hmm. don't say I've been a pilot for you know six years yeah. pilots have to note how many miles they've flown a plane or how many yeah. hours they've flown a plane mm -hmm. for so same shit in it Pretty much, yeah. That's pretty much exactly it. But I find, like, for me, anyway, it's been like, I just tell people how many gigs I've had. That seems to be, like, the safe bet. Yeah. But I, I suppose, as it got to stage for you now, and you're like, you just don't count that anymore, I'd like to hope so, no? Yeah, I, or are you like, this is number I, 73? I, <laughs> I pretty much am a bit spectrum me, and I think, like, I've done about 115 or something now. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm terrible. Do you know, like, numbers and stuff like that, and, like, memory dates and all this, but, like, I think when I guess about maybe 20, because even now, I think I've done... 10 and that could uh, be wrong do you know what I mean it was yeah. like it was probably one or two I don't know yeah <laughs> I don't think most people would be able to tell you but I think it was me and Jordan Robinson initially we were counting how many gigs um, and I think we started at roughly the same time and he had done like 70 by mm -hmm. the time I'd done like yeah. 20 but um, yeah I think it's because it did work out it was like my 100th gig back in November or something yeah so because yeah. I've seen Heather did it recently she said this is my three year anniversary of son I was like uh, ah, that's a nice way to do it uh, <laughs> see everyone remembers when yeah. they first did it but again in terms of like I've been doing it for X amount of years I think mm -hmm. it's a bit pointless to say that really mm -hmm. and then what made you want to go for the Sunflower show because I remember whenever you sort of launched that it was sort of like for me it made sense but for you was it like the sort of thing is like yeah this is now the time to start doing the solo shows or yeah well I was thinking about doing it before the first lockdown mm -hmm. i was like i think i've probably got about enough material now i was asked to do one down and there was a thing called the comedy lab i think that graham watson ran which sort of gave everyone the chance to do their own half hour show mm -hmm. uh half an hour to an hour but when he asked me it was like that nah, don't have enough and then just before the pandemic it was like right i think i'm ready now yeah and then as you say everything shut down mm -hmm. And then I'm going to ask the question that I hate asking people that do stand-up, but like, what was the thing that actually got you into stand-up all the way back when? Uh, was there like an itch there you always wanted it or was like an well, impulse thing? Or? A few people had said to me over the years, like, you know, have you ever thought of doing stand-up? <laughs> and then 
one of my colleagues said to me in like 2016, he was like, you should definitely do it. Mm-hmm. And then it broke my knee. Yeah. And I was off work for three months. And one of my mates got tickets to a stand-up thing again in the black box for their TED. So it was like mm-hmm. three actors that had been in Father Ted oh, okay. just doing stand-up. Yeah. And afterwards, he like we were having a few pints and... Like I was sitting in the front row with my crutches with a cast from like my thigh down to my ankle. Um, and he was like, have you never thought about doing it? And I was like, well, actually a few people have said, and then I was like, I'm not going back to work anytime. So like, I was just uh, twiddling my thumbs at home. So it was like, started writing bits and pieces. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, got my first gig sorted out in the path. Like the I, presume, I presume you had to wait for the knee brace to come off. You didn't limp your way up there. No, it was actually <laughs> just by coincidence. The day I went back to work was the day of my first gig. No way. <laughs> and it was fucking terrible, man. Honestly, I was... So I think like in my first like 20 or so gigs... There was probably a few where it did really well Mm -hmm. and a lot that were really shit. I just couldn't get any sort of consistency. And were you aware of that or were you like, I think I'm doing really well here? No, I think I think it was aware that it could do better, and I was aware that some were a lot worse or better than others. But uh, part of the problem was like I just I would just sit there and and, like pile into the beers (laughs) and like the excitement gets you like I know but it took a while for the penalty to drop it was like why am I sitting here struggling to remember what's next (laughs) you know why not just wait and have a few beers after like yeah, uh, whenever I first met Kieran, we did like a night because we were both on the same sort of timeline of when we started, uh, and we met each other in the where was it? It was in the students' union. There was a stand-up night in there. Oh, I and I was straight in. The girl's like, "Do you want a drink?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah no problem." I was like, Da-da-da. and then I was like looking at him, and he was all Kieran is so nervous and rattly sort yeah. of stuff. I was like, "Well, what's crack you?" And he's like, "Oh, I just need to get this right." And I was like, "Sure, have a beer." He goes, "No, like would never have a beer before." And he goes, "Hmm, that's interesting." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe take a leaf out of that book one time. I don't know when the penny dropped for me, like, but. Because remember, sort of everyone that was in the same sort of circles that I was doing it, pretty much everyone was was drinking or getting stoned. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then I just started noticing more and more people who weren't, mm-hmm. and I was like, yeah, they're a bit more polished yeah. than, than I tend to be. Like, yeah. Because so. actually, the first time I met you in the sunflower, I noticed you were. I was like, oh, you, you drink this as well. And you're like, it's actually a zero zero. And I was just like, huh? Because uh, <laughs> yeah, funny. I got. Uh, I just started getting into alcohol free beers. There was a few that I came across last year. They're like, that's actually really tasty. Mm-hmm. Look, and then I started getting a beer belly from drinking alcohol free beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think I've given them a go. The zero zero is actually from the like draft machine. It actually is, it yeah, like it actually is good. But I remember I drove to Oma one time and had a couple of them Heineken zero zeros. And I'm like, I've had a terrible gig. I've been drinking zero zeros. This is the worst night of mine. You see, fucking Heine- <laughs> like, I don't like Heineken at the best of yeah. times, but last night I just. It was the only alcohol-free beer they had, and mm. I was like, "This just tastes like shitty regular Heineken <laughs> without any of the fun." Like you just. And for you, is it like a thing of like you know, obviously you do a lot of driving the gigs and stuff like that, or is it more like you just cut back sort of <laughs> on the alcohol sort of stuff? Uh, no, I have cut back a lot in the last year, and funny that's probably like Jordan Robinson. Like he's probably the comedian I'd sort of be closest to, and mm-hmm. he doesn't really drink at yeah. all. Um, and I don't know, just the more and more time I've spent gigging on late nights mm-hmm. I've been like I'm 43 now and yeah. I'm like if I have beers you know at the weekend like Thursday I can hardly keep my eyes open <laughs> like still I'm just a fanny now yeah uh, it's different it's different for the likes of me rolling into like Jordanstown at like I don't know 12 o'clock on fucking Wednesday and you're like oh I was out last night and you just sit there don't listen to anybody and get through your day like, yeah. it's completely, you have no responsibilities whatsoever like uh, I, that's one of the things I've noticed now with getting a wee bit older because all my mates now I, I'm 24 so all my mates are out of uni and you see them, you're like, oh, come on up for a midweek. And they're just like, no, it's not. It's just not worth it at all. Said, well, I would, it wouldn't have crossed my mind when I was your age. I would have been like, I fucking, let's do it. Yeah, I need more. I need to find more mates like you back. <laughs> oh, you don't. But uh, I don't know. Like, it's just sort of, I've never really suffered from hangovers in terms of like feeling sick or headaches. I'm the exact same. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. People are really envious. But the only thing that I do get is just like completely vacant. Like, I can be sitting there talking to someone the next day and just, like, just completely lose yeah. my trail of thought, forget what I'm talking about, mm. and just zone out. I'm the same. Yeah, people, like, I think it does, because obviously at a certain age you do start getting hangovers, and I, for some reason, haven't touched it, but it's just like... I'm, I'm I, still I'm still the same. I don't really get them. Yeah. I've, I've woke up once... What I, well, what will happen to me is, it's probably a bit gross from listeners, but what will happen to me is I'll throw up on the night, but mm. not because I'm 
the hospital drunk it's just hit a tolerance level and the stomach just goes let's get this out of here yeah and i'll just book on the night and then as if nothing happened get out fucking pop a few minutes and back out again uh, as if nothing's happened yeah. and then next morning wake up feeling 10,000 percent yeah it's, and obviously at the time you're like this is right but the next day you're like yeah that's probably a good <laughs> good thing that uh, that happened. Like, well it's just that the whole tiredness thing it, as i say no it, it's not even like 48 hours it's mm-hmm. like on the Wednesday or the Thursday morning, I'm trying to get up for work and yeah. I can hardly open my eyes. Well, you have kids as well, don't you? Yeah. So, like, I can only imagine what that's like. And- I know. Well, it's not too bad now because they're, they're pretty independent. But I remember, mm-hmm. like, as well, when they were really wee, there was one time, like, I wouldn't say I was hungover. I was still pissed the next morning. Like, <laughs> and, like my son just trying to play with me. And I was like, please don't talk to daddy. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I laugh. Like, I've started meeting people now where, like, you know, have kids and you're really young kids and stuff like that, and you see how tired they are. Like, they're just physically exhausted. I work with a guy who's a swim teacher, and he doesn't teach his own kid. They come in at three for like, their own lessons, uh-huh. and he just sits up in the balcony and falls asleep. Like, it's this joke golden 30 minutes of, like, let's try and recover from oh, the night before. I- and then I listen to like people my own age be like, I'm so tired from work this week, nine to five. I'm like, you, we have no idea what's coming first. Like, yeah. we're going to be fucking well, hit I, by a ball. I was sort of lucky the first time around because my son just slept. Like, yeah regular hours and everything mm-hmm. and it was sweet and then my daughter just fucking screamed continually for about three years <laughs> she still likes to do it just yeah. for the crack every so often <laughs> just but, to give you a bit of ptsd like. <laughs> oh, but yeah i can remember like just walking back and forward trying to settle her down in her bedroom and i used to count how many times i'd pace to the wall and back and i think the 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 record was like 95 times before she stopped crying <laughs> and then putting her back you would just be like shh 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 and then trying to put her into the cot and setting her in and then just stepping on a squeaky floorboard yeah. and I just set her off again. <laughs> That's pure movie scene stuff. I'll just oh. be like, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then it was only like a couple of years later we were getting a bit of work done to the house and I said, there was a joiner in and I was like, can you have a look at these floorboards? And it took him 10 seconds yeah. to fix them all and I was like, why did I not think of getting that done when yeah. we had a screaming baby? Yeah, uh, yeah hindsight's a beautiful thing. But I want to touch on because your actual your daytime job as well because probably make up a good part of your stand up set if that's fair to say. Uh, bits and pieces. Yeah, bits and pieces. Yeah. You'd like to touch on so like you're a gardener by trade or is it yes, more, are I, you like a tree surgeon or more? Am I underselling that? Uh, no, not really. We do. So it's in terms of landscaping, like it's mm-hmm. a reasonably big company because there's like ten of us. So mm-hmm. there is like the boss has like all the qualifications for doing tree surgery yeah, okay. but it's not as if it's something we're doing flat out yeah, all day yeah. every day but that's how it broke my knee yeah, so I, I presumed yeah that's that was <laughs> the, the joke was i got kneecapped by a dissident branch of a tree um <laughs> so yeah it was actually a broken kneecap and they did say in the hospital it looks like you've had a punishment beaten because it was properly <laughs> shattered but i i'm out and about just mainly doing garden maintenance cutting grass hedges mm-hmm. sometimes doing big like side clearances and just transforming gardens like with turf and stones and whatever yeah. and it's, that's probably a weird question but like is it the sort of thing you love doing or is it just like a, no I do. you do love it yeah. I, see before that like i've had so many jobs over the years like and i've been sitting in offices i was an estate agent for quite a while i cannot and, picture that yeah <laughs> I, well funny I, I didn't mind doing it when i was in scotland but it's just relentless in mm-hmm. terms of people you know, you're constantly thinking, fuck, what do I need to do next to get that sale completed yeah, or, yeah. you know, keep that person happy and make sure that person does. And then there was a few lying bastards that mm-hmm. were typical estate agents yeah. that um, just did your head in. But it was mainly the general public that did my head in. Like, you're working with the public, I work with our council, doesn't that's a fucking nightmare. Honestly, just like <laughs> some of the, I can remember being at a house and this woman just like having a look around the house and like trying to make conversation, just saying like, you know, have you got your own house on the market? You know, mm-hmm. have you been thinking about moving? From... And she was just looking at me as if I was trying to suck her soul out or something. <laughs> and then she just, I was like, have you any questions for me? And she was like, what type of bricks are these? And oh, I'm like, fuck's sake. what? Like, <laughs> fuck off. They're, they're red bricks. What do you want me to say? Like, that's like an awkward question. Do you get the interview stage and they're like, you, you get drilled in your head, you have to ask a question. You're like, oh, what color of the brick? I, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. You dickhead. But uh, I don't know. It was almost as if she was there just to annoy me. And <laughs> that was a fairly regular occurrence. Like, yeah. So it just, uh, I got to the stage where, like, I actually, when I was doing it in Scotland, the whole buying and selling a house is a completely different system to here. Okay. So then when I moved back here when, when my son was born, I was just like, did it for two years. And I'm like, this is actually not the same job at all. Yeah. So I just fancied being 
I didn't want to be sitting behind a desk all day. Aye. So it is brutal sometimes when you're working outside. Like Wednesday was fucking horrible. I seen a video of you one time. You're like in a field and just wind. Oh yeah, you yeah, yeah. And just I was like, no part of that looks fun. Like that was during Storm Dudley. That's yeah. the day I pissed on my own face. Yeah. Um, that was I was just like round behind a hedge, taking a quick squirt that was desperately needed. And like the wind was so strong that I was sort of having to pee, and then I just went and watched it just go about twelve foot. And then all of a sudden, like, the wind changed direction. Like, that's such a that's such a bad thing. Women listen, I'm like, what the fuck? Like the objective of seeing how far you can piss. I know, especially when there's a good breeze. Behind I know, you. but uh, I have to say, like, even the fact that it was disgusting, I was still laughing ahead. I was pissing myself. Um, I did think it was hilarious when it happened, but then luckily I've got a nice wipe clean head it's an easy wipe yeah. yeah you're like one wipe does all for that bad boy honestly there's times i'm sitting like wednesday was a horrible day like mm. we're doing quite a lot of tree work and feeding it into a chipper and all the the dust of the the chip branches was just blowing everywhere and it was wet and i was just like covered in this horrible like fine mm-hmm. wood chip and um, then we got into the van and there was just like these wee paper towel things and I was just like I'm so glad I'm bald like <laughs> just totally clean myself <laughs> like the other guys had it all through their hair and all and I was like good luck getting that cleaned like, <laughs> and when, when did the baldness set in has that been a long thing or a recent thing uh, no funny I was talking about this the someone I can remember the first time someone commented holy shit you're going you're going bald I was 14 no way yeah because I did like I had like a quite long hair at the time and then someone lifted it and like you could see that I was receding at we that all know stage. Boys, yeah we all know boys like I, that, like, yeah. well that was me <laughs> but then the thing was my dad and his brother are bald both my grandfathers were bald my mum has five brothers all bald yeah so you didn't have much hope yeah, yeah. so I was like well it's gonna happen yeah. like, that similar thing happened to me I remember my dad pointed out to me when I was first year of school so what's that 13 he's like you're trying to go on I was like what like <laughs> the onset of like panic right whatever. off I, I, I used to dye my hair like religiously and then oh honestly I, yeah since I moved up well over like the last three years yeah probably a lot and then I was like I don't give a fuck anymore yeah. see that's the thing I mean I was sort of just accepted at a young age yeah. that it was going to happen but and it's, it's getting to the stage where I've nearly been bald for the majority of my life oh my god yeah <laughs> and like yeah. i can remember like my girlfriend like, like still not married so sometimes i call her my girlfriend sometimes my wife uh my partner shona like she can remember just when i lived around the corner from here actually mm-hmm. on sunnyside yeah. street on just Mur- saying to her <laughs> i went i i went out and bought a pair of clippers and was just like just like i don't see any point in <laughs> trying to do anything anymore just shave it off and like sitting in the kitchen and she she said she can remember me that's it. That's that's my hair done now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's plain sailing from here. Like, you want to save yourself a fortune. <laughs> exactly. And, and, yeah, there's times that when I think about it, I'm just like, I'm so fucking glad I don't have hair. It just yeah. looks like a pain in the arse. Yeah. I think it's one of those things, like, bonus, like, you just have to own it. You, oh, can't, I, you can't whimper your way into it. Whenever people just, get, like, the comb over goes too long. Oh, it's all, I, and everyone's thinking, it's like, come on, mate, you need to get rid of that. Yeah. Whenever you just own it from the onset and go, look, this is coming off, you're like, yes. Yeah. Because then it just grows to suit everyone. There's not, like, you can't not suit it. Do you know what I mean? I you, know. You have to suit it. There's no two ways about it. it. Mm, Unless it, you're a pure with like wax or shiny. And do people take it a bit far? I think sometimes. See, I know somebody who like he should just own it and go bald. But yeah. he is doing. I think he's had like a couple of hair transplants and he dyes it. <laughs> and like, I don't mind trying the hair transplants if you're really desperate and it like works and all good. But if it's not I, working for you, it's time to call it quits. Exactly. Like. I think it's still too early. Like you know. <laughs> You know, maybe in 20 years' time they'll have perfected or something. Yeah, yeah. But uh, my mate that got it, like, it's just... The fact that he dyes his hair jet black to try and then yeah. make it look like he's got a thicker head of hair it's than too, he does. It's too dramatic, yeah. It's, it's too obvious. Yeah. It's just like, why does that man have such an unnaturally <laughs> shade of black hair? Like, <laughs> he sounds like, do you ever like, see them photos of like, them babies that come out and they just have thick heads of hair? And you're like, what the fuck? That's what my there? son was like. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> it's, I just think Which you... raised a few eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, enjoy it while you have it, son. <laughs> yeah, well, he's 11 now. And I'm like, won't be that, won't be that long now, kid. <laughs> Uh, I want to touch back on like the garden stuff because one thing that immediately strikes my mind when I think of gardening is like most people sit down on a Sunday afternoon, throw on some TV, Alan Titchmarsh comes on, and it's all glamorous and it's all, and I'm very cynical when it comes to these things. Uh-huh. People's back gardens, like what part of we river and a pond? And it's like how fucking unpractical is that? 
and like how they make it look so simple the things like that annoy you from being in that actual like industry not really cause, well for start i never really watch any programs yeah. like that but there are so there are a few clients we have right and there's one in particular it's just the definition of more money than sense i'm yeah. like why the fuck are you doing this to your yard? like you have a lovely yard mm -hmm. um but no i suppose it, it all depends like a lot of people would do it themselves as a, as a project, especially yeah. retired people get like my dad just spends all day in his garden, like yeah. and it still looks like shit. <laughs> um, but there is, uh, it doesn't annoy me as as long as um, someone's paying me to maintain it. Yeah, that's I'm happy enough. Yeah, that's fair enough because I just always thought that she was like they get this lovely like sort of work done and then next thing like do I don't know they always do it on like a council estate or like do somewhere like uh -huh. that and I was like could never like the amount of money this has cost to fucking renovate and put like a pond in your back garden is yeah not wise. like what the fuck is going on here and we're meant to sit there and be like that's wonderful like you know i should do that yeah that's i don't i don't get it i don't get it whatsoever yeah i've not really done much to mine i'd buy a couple of like big pots stick the plants in them and put some fairy lights up yeah and there you go that's the thing this is the where we're recording the minute is like a rented house actually my girlfriend's dad owns this house uh -huh. and just by chance the woman moved out of it joe because she saved up during lockdown and we're like bingo we'll take it but uh, he's been up a few times and he's like, you should probably do a wee bit of work to that garden. And in the back of my head, I'm like, not my fucking house. Like, I, you don't you live in a rented house? Like, no. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Like, I'm, I'm doing a, a job next week. So I'm actually going self-employed as well. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a house in the same development I am. And it's been rented out. So the people that were renting it didn't give a shit about doing anything yeah. to the garden. And now the owner is actually moving back into it. And he's asked me to do it's just gonna take ages to do mm. we fiddly jobs like um but in terms of stand-up comedy mm -hmm. and gardening it's actually it's such a good job to have because it's quite despite the fact that i'm going out and working with like two or three other guys mm -hmm. or or even one sometimes it's quite solitary so you go out in the van together you'll arrive at the job and you'll be like right you go and do that i'll do this but Mm -hmm. And then you can just pop your headphones in. Yeah. So a lot of the time I listen back the gigs and you see if you've done uh, new okay. material, mm -hmm. you can listen to it and you're like, right, that got a big laugh. Mm -hmm. And you can just listen to it on repeat. Yeah. And without even thinking too much, you know. Uh, it's just, not like you're sitting down and doing a bit of work. Like exactly. You're just doing it while you're working. Yeah. yeah so you're good. just thinking, right, I need to sort of tweak that or tweak that. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you might just think, right, a pause and put a quick note on your phone to say, right, add this mm -hmm. on or, or slow that, is that better. Is that something you do all the time? Would you always be reviewing your sort of stuff? Especially if it's brand, brand new, like? Uh, yeah, I suppose. I, I've actually been really shit since, like, Christmas. I've hardly done any new material. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it's... I would sort of... Anything new, I try to introduce it surrounded by material that i know yeah. is tried and tested yeah. darren taught me that he was like don't be trying any new stuff on I, this, on straight off own, the like, bat throw it in the middle because at least you know either way you'll get through it you know yeah. the, you start with the laugh and finish the laugh with the middle so it's shaky you'll I, get through it like it'll be okay but see i, I didn't even realize that until about october last year <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's why i'm so grateful for something i have darren darren always gives me wee tips and insider stuff and all he had me a gig down in yuri and I like to try new stuff, especially if I'm in a new place and do like a wee like topical joke, Joe, when I'm in there. Mm. And he wrote to me, is like, it's a paid gig under no circumstances, new stuff. And I was like, message received. Hey. <laughs> message received. But I mean, fair enough. Like, uh, whenever you're going down, I think, where was that in? McCoy's. So like, Shane, like there was Shane Todd on, like Darren's on, like Tom and he was coming up, like it wasn't the place to start being like, I'm uh, to try yeah, this yeah. bit out and take a risk, like just stick to stuff that you know, hopefully you'll get a bit of a reaction. Yeah. And, like, uh, that looked like a good night. Yeah, it was a uh, brilliant night. I think I did the one before. It was between Christmas and New Year. There was See, one. It's, the thing is, it's a brilliant room. And obviously a lot of people <laughs> listen to this from home, like down around Nuri and all. Like, Nuri actually, I, well, I'm biased, obviously, from from there. But, like, the McCoy's room itself is fantastic. I've never heard anyone have a bad word against it. Yeah. And there doesn't seem to be, well, maybe once a month is a bit, it's probably about right. But, like, you could maybe get it one or two more nights in there, you know? Aye. Like, there isn't, there's not much of a big scene down there. And any time you see people go down there, like, I don't know, do shows, it always seems to go, like, the bank and... Do venues like that. I think you said you were down in Warm Point one time in um, the Duke. Duke, yeah, Duke yeah. out the back and stuff uh, like that. Like there is good venues for it. If you know uh, what I mean, like there just doesn't seem to be a whole whole pile in there. Like I know, but it's you can say that of so many towns and villages all around. Yeah, like, true. You know, you sort of think, why is there not a comedy night here mm -hmm. once a week or once a month? Yeah. But um, I McCurry's is the only 
one I've done in Uri and I've done it twice and both times like it was it was class nah, it's like, good, mate. like yeah it's good because actually I remember hearing who was I listening to Colin Colin always says he's like I'm never going to Uri he's like, Is he's, that right? he's like he's like they're all bastards uh, <laughs> he's like they like, just never do well down there and I was like huh yeah. <laughs> he's the only person I've ever heard say it like I'm trying to think if there's anywhere I've been that that I've had that um yeah is there like a distinct area you're like oh fuck I don't think so don't actually like no I, I always love going to Derry and Oma, I've only done a couple of times, but Oma, I've I've absolutely loved as mm. well. Um, but no, I can't really think of anywhere that I just think. I find with Oma, I've only done it twice, but it, I don't think it's been the best received place. But at the same time, I, fi- I get the opinion. My, I think they love like the Northern Ireland reference and sort of comedy, if you know what I mean. Like, uh, all, this, all the hair stuff, which I have very limited amount. And like yeah. I said, I like to do more other things. And like I think that's the thing. Every time I go there, I think that's what they're waiting for, and that's what they want. And like I'm still not gonna do it. <laughs> See, that's funny because I think I heard you talking about this. Did we have a conversation about it and sort of staying clear of sectarian jokes and stuff? And I, yeah. I wouldn't have done a, an awful lot of it before lockdown. Mm-hmm. I had bits and pieces, but since <laughs> I don't know why. I think it was just I think it was actually it's ever like, since ever since we had that conversation. Like, I don't really do it. You're like, I'm going to lean into it. No, <laughs> well, I have done it. I think I was doing the Hatfield um, in about August and these guys come in wearing like um, snoods because they didn't have masks yeah. so they had the snoods up and sunglasses on because mm-hmm. like it was August and I was like, oh, here's the fucking Ra arriving yeah. in now. And I got a massive laugh and then I sort of remembered some of the sort of Northern Irish jokes I'd done before and just mm-hmm. threw them out and then I was like, actually... I really enjoyed yeah. those jokes like and then mm-hmm. just sort of built on it from there but but it's interesting because I find like that subject as a whole it's like it's taboo but it's not taboo in any oh, sort I... of way whatsoever but I feel like whenever people like hear you said, it gets that shock factor of like oh, I don't know you could actually Joe go and say that it's, yeah. it's only the line that Northern Ireland comedians can run uh-huh. if you know what I mean so whenever they hear it they're like holy fuck <laughs> I know but the other thing is it's like see if I do it in front of like a Catholic audience because it's like you know, if you go to a Republican area mm-hmm. and I stand up with a name like Ian Thompson, you know, <laughs> and come out with it and, and they love it. And I say, like, dirty Fenian bastard. And, like, <laughs> everyone laughs. And yeah. they're like, yeah, that's us. <laughs> See, I did it in Portrush and it was a room full of Balamoney farmers and they were just sitting there, like, not sure about this boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just, you can only play what's in front of you, yeah, you know? Yeah, that, uh, I suppose that's true. I, um, I was going to ask you about the Lemon Shogi and like what he's expecting from it. Are you going to pull like a mix card or what he's what he's hoping for? Or do you have like a set audience that you like to get in? Uh, I suppose anyone that buys a ticket is a fucking win, but you, know, know. you get what I'm asking. Okay, but I would say like when I did my show on the Sunflower, mm-hmm. 85% of the audience were people that I knew. Right, okay. But the thing was, I set everything up in terms of the ticketing on Eventbrite and all, and I had the list and I was actually doing the door. So when people <laughs> arrived, I was like, right, go and sort of. Which is always good when you're putting on a comedy night. Mm-hmm. You need like a hype man at the door yeah, to yeah. say, right, we're going to be starting in 20 minutes. This is the mm-hmm. format. Because other times you go to a gig and there's people sitting there looking around that have no idea. Yeah, they're like, they're, all, like, they're nervous. Aye, what's but what's they're coming. sitting there going, is there actually a comedy night yeah. happening here yeah, or what? Yeah. Because nobody has greeted them at the door. Nobody knows what's happening. Mm-hmm. So there was... I don't know, there, there must have been like 12 people or something that I didn't know. And I was basically like, why the fuck are you here? Like, uh, which was really good because uh, some of them were like, oh, I saw you once in Pog Ugly, so or, you know, whatever. And I just like really liked it and I thought yeah. it would come down. And then there was three English guys who were just over oh, right, okay. for a lads weekend yeah. and Googled Belfast Comedy. They arrived on the afternoon and bought the tickets in the afternoon. No way. And they really made, like they sat yeah. right at the front and I was like, you know, every so often I was like, do you know who Jerry Adams is? And they're like, uh, um, so like it really added to it having them there. But that's so, just, that's pure comedy fans that like, you know, if you're willing to come over straight off the boat and go, want to go to a comedy show, like, I, there's not many people that would do that. Like, Yeah, yeah. So that's the thing. Like I would imagine with the limelight, again, it's probably going to be mostly people I know mm-hmm. and, and mostly people that know Johnny mm-hmm. and then just like, a few stragglers that yeah. have seen this before that are like, ah, oh, fuck, we might as well go to yeah, that. Yeah, like, he's not a bad lad. Like, oh, yeah, we'll, exactly. We'll I don't hate him that much. Yeah. He's mildly amusing at times. <laughs> That's really interesting because I find that, like, I, well, I don't know, my opinion on comedy, I don't have a leg to stand on because I haven't been doing it long. But uh-huh. I have, you, you have your preconceived idea about how to do things and I come from, like, a, I've done marketing and social media and stuff so my whole 
fucking ideology comes from social media marketing. So uh, here the people have seen you in somewhere and then going, oh, we're going to go see you again somewhere without like finding you on the internet or just watching clips of you. It seems a bit strange. Uh, if, you, if you get what I'm saying, because I find it strange now that like people are operating shows and doing these here other things. And just as an outsider looking in or someone that does marketing, it's like, how do you expect people to come to a show if you've never put up do clips and do, that's exactly. a really interesting that's dynamic. the thing like, I, I put nothing yeah online really mm -hmm. like but you still manage to sell it like a sunflower show and do you know what I mean I find that really interesting yeah but then again as I said sunflower you know that room has capacity of 50 people mm -hmm. and so a lot of my mates a lot of um comedians who you know have been gigging for you know however four years mm -hmm. that wanted to mm -hmm support me yeah. in terms of coming along to see me do mm -hmm. my first show yeah and then i think i kind of well i think it was a ten or a ticket so the limelight mm -hmm. is slightly more expensive mm -hmm. i think by the time you pay the booking fee it's like 14 pound yeah um so it'll be interesting but they promote the shit out of it yeah exactly um but yeah it'll be interesting to see the other thing that's annoying like with eventbrite or we got tickets you can if you're putting on your own gig, mm -hmm. you can then log in and see who's bought a ticket. But because of GDPR, we can't get no, no that way. with the limelight um, because the, the tickets are on sale through Ticketmaster and, you and the limelight that. don't even know who's <clears throat> bought a ticket. Oh shit, so you have no idea and you don't even know the numbers then for that? No, no we know oh, the numbers, numbers. but oh, okay. I don't know. See, with shows, I've put on three shows before. So there's my own one, The Sunflower, and then I, I did a couple in the cafe bar mm. area, the Lyric Theatre. Yeah charity fundraisers and you could see exactly who had bought a ticket mm -hmm. and it, so you knew <laughs> who to pastor like yeah. saying oh do you want to do you want to come to this yeah. game? but now it's just like i have no idea who's bought a ticket and who oh, hasn't shit. yeah right enough um <laughs> and previously for those other shows that i'd put on all my mates waited to the last minute and then well that's what like, all good mates would do 48 hours before the show all of a sudden there's loads of ticket sales yeah. but this time around people keep screenshotting me the receipt from Ticketmaster mm -hmm. going, oh yeah, I'm coming to your show. So I know that the majority of people yeah. that I would have been torturing to come to it have already got their tickets. Oh, so so. You're, yeah, you're like, fuck, I need to find more Exactly, to yeah. <laughs> I need to go on more podcasts. Yeah. Spread the word. Yeah, literally. Uh, I suppose that's what they're here for. That's the great dynamic. Like, I have to admit something though. Whenever Johnny came on and it just came out that morning as he was coming in the door, did you do the show? I was like, what's the crack of your poster? He goes, oh, it's a movie reference and you're going to laugh. I was like, I, I don't know movies. Like, what is that? And then <laughs> I was like, I think I know what it is, but I don't want to say it. And then in the back of my head, I was like, it's Dirty Dancing, Sean. It's definitely Dirty Dancing. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I didn't say it and then Alfred, I haven't stopped thinking about it. And then whenever you were coming on, I was like, I have to admit this to, I have to admit this to someone. I, I didn't say it to him at the time that I knew what it was. I've never been so scundered in my life. That is so good though. Because, because it's like, such a brilliant poster. Yeah. And it's like, but it's like a real iconic yeah. poster, like the, the, the movie. Um, but there was because Shona, my partner, we couldn't, Johnny said you want to do the show in the limelight. I was like, yep. Yeah. And it took us about six weeks. And then all of a sudden, I just thought, right, Johnny always wears a suit. I wear the boots, yeah. suited and booted. And then immediately thought of the poster for Pretty <laughs> Woman. But as my partner was just like, are people like, is anyone under the age of 30 going to understand that, that <laughs> reference? And I was like, yeah, it's pretty famous movie like no yeah they're definitely what i just live under a rock like but I, the amount yeah. of people that have said to me oh, really? why are you wearing a skirt and yeah. wally boots that's what the, yeah that's what jumped out to me i was like i got the wally boots reference and like the whole title i thought it was just absolutely genius like but whenever i came to look i was like is he wearing a skirt <laughs> yeah that's it because i was actually in a charity shop there a couple of weeks ago and saw the vhs cassette no way i know <laughs> That is, it's ridiculous how accurate it is. Whoever made that poster for you is a fucking genius. Do you know who it was? It was my, it was taken on this phone. No way. Johnny's got a green screen and um, I just got my, Johnny came around to the house, set the green screen up. Mm -hmm. My missus took a few photos on, she took about 10 photos on that phone. I emailed them to my mate. Me, like, he put it on yeah, there. Yeah. Fuck. And so many people contacted me to say that is a fucking brilliant poster yeah. like, that's a poster you would have you just leave on your wall whenever you've done this I'll yeah. be like that is a fucking highlight of the career like that first line any, of the any gigs I do when I see there's a physical poster mm -hmm. I try and steal it like on yeah. the way out at the end of the night I did that at the Paddy McDonald one in Yerry Football Club uh, I was on it and it was like the first poster I'd been on it was a wee tiny thing I was like yes I'm definitely doing that but I didn't know they would have physical posters during the day so I sadly went online took a screenshot and sent it to like Joe Vistaprint and got right. one made. Yeah, so I've, the, I've done that yeah, before as yeah, well. Yeah, so they sent it to me and then I went to the show and Darren's like, here, that's your first on your poster. You take that home with me. And I was like, 
Thanks. No one already <laughs> had my own self made one on the wall already, framed and everything. Absolute highlight of my life. But uh, yeah, there's another one. Where was the other one I'm doing? I can't remember. There's another one that came out there. Oh, PB's in the way. They have one, so it's, I've ordered it already. <laughs> Good man. It's, like, it's coming in as well. Just See, I think uh, I've only got a handful of posts, but I remember like doing uh, dailies in Oma, not the green room, but the main room. Yeah. So I did that. I think it was the start of 2020. Mm-hmm. Is that right? I just before all the the shit kicked off for the pandemic, and um, so it was me, Shane Todd, Sean Haggerty, Diona, and Demo Clark. Right in the same lineup. Uh huh. Holy fuck! Um, I know, and I was just like, fuck! I, you know, at the time, I was sort of that was probably one of the biggest gigs that I'd yeah. done. I was like, like, like this is a dream lineup to mm-hmm. be on with, um, and the poster was up on the wall at the end of the night, and I thought I only did ten minutes. Everyone else sort of did fifteen or twenty. And I was like, that's one of the best 10 minutes sets yeah. I've ever done. I was so pleased with how it had gone. And then on the way out, there was the poster on the wall. And I just started, I was like, I'm just going to start peeling the blue tag off. <laughs> and uh, I was like, so do you mind if I take this? Because the bar, there was a woman behind the bar just looking at me. And I was like, um, can I take this? And she's like, I work away. She goes, hey, you should have got one of those comedians to sign that for you. And they oh. were really, <laughs> I was like, I thought I'd nailed it. And yeah. she was like, who the fuck's this guy? You just take the back up from the morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> In fairness now, I think uh, I'd put my hat back on. So yeah. it's well, amazing. How, I'm surprised. There's not like the good people of home to bring you back down. I know, ground again, I know. Like. But I'm always surprised anyone can recognize me when I'm wearing a hat on a, a face covering. Yeah. Um, although people do like I'm amazed when someone just waves at me I'm like how can you recognise me from my wrinkly eyes <laughs> are, you, are you talking about friends and family recognise you or like actually, have you started getting to the stage where people are being like oh Ian Thompson uh, no I've only had that like a handful of times and it is bizarre um, and there has been a couple of times when I've walked off going wonder if they think I'm Paddy Ruff <laughs> <laughs> that's a massive thing here everyone gets everyone confused like I listen to Paddy McDonald stuff and like People think he's Kieran Bartlett and fucking Mickey and yeah. all them boys. They all, everyone, for some reason, just blend into one for people. I know, like, I know funny. I was, remember standing outside the Hatfield in, um, at the end of last summer and this guy, it was just before the gig started and like we're out the front, Mickey was having a smoke and I, I was just chatting to him and this guy came over and he was like, mate, you're a fucking legend all. And Mickey's like, well, thank you very much. Sir. And like, he's just like, honestly, mate, I think you're, you know, I watch your stuff, you know, those wee clips online, your podcast and all, you're brilliant. And Mickey's like, cheers. And he's like, all the best, Paddy. <laughs> Walks on, like, but I remember doing like a few, because Paddy Raff started about the same time as me and there was a couple of times I had like got gigs lined up and showed up and whoever was put, putting it on it's like are you doing your guitar stuff tonight oh, and I'm no. like no that's not me man <laughs> <laughs> is that not heartbreaking you're just like oh for fuck well, I suppose you got the gig in the end of the day really oh wait, exactly gig. yeah like, um, anything for more fucking gigs yeah <laughs> yeah it only happened a handful of times but um yeah it's it's bizarre like because even last night one thing I can't get used to as well is when you're on stage and people start taking a video or a f- or yeah. taking your photo as you're mm-hmm. like midway through your set and it especially it depends what stage you're at midway through your joke and mm-hmm. like you're like i can't stop this or it's going to ruin the whole joke i have to keep yeah. talking and then we did a gig before christmas and new year and this woman was just sitting in the front <laughs> well and i just stopped and i was like are you taking a video of this i was like please can you stop i just <laughs> i was like i don't want this going out like does it throw you off or is it more so for the fact of like <laughs> don't be throwing out a fucking 10 minute clip well the thing it's like because you could if someone shared clips of some of the stuff I'm saying mm-hmm. and it's out of context right? uh, yes. so so someone <laughs> Graham Watson actually shared a bit from the black box but he'd put no, hashtag no content no context Ian Thompson yeah. right? and it's just me standing there saying up the rat <laughs> now if he didn't if he hadn't put no context it would have looked like I'm just fucking <laughs> just, you know, a, just rally like <laughs> yeah I'm just big into the paramilitaries whereas you know when you hear the rest of the joke, yeah, you understand. And in your set, there's a good few chances to get that clip. Of oh, exactly, <laughs> that yeah, exact, exactly. Those exact, um, those exact words. 
So it's just when I see someone sitting there completely pissed and I have no idea who they are mm -hmm. and their their video and everything, I'm like, I don't, yeah. I don't want you to be doing that. Like, I like I like the clips of like the start stand off clip and the speakeasy did and like they just did the laughter and then it was just like the high of the laugh and then nothing else. I was like, yeah, I like that. That's yeah, because yeah. like, it's like the validation of yeah, this guy was funny. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm happy enough for that. But if people are like going in, especially because I'm only doing what have I got? I would say I have ten minutes. That's editing. I drove other bits like maybe it'll turn into something else. But like, uh -huh. I'm just, like, I'm not giving anything else out. I remember Fuck that. Aaron Butler. A couple of years ago he did just a minute long video of him and it was just the laughter mm -hmm. and the applause so it's just him on stage <laughs> that's so, that's so arg i know but, <laughs> no, but it was actually really good so it's just him standing smiling by the <laughs> microphone and you just hear the applause like, and then it just cuts to the next one yeah um but I, like you do have to do that i was going back to what i said about the social media and the marketing aspect of it like i put out the video the other day and it cringed me to do it but it was like a hi my name's sean i'm standing comedian from northern ireland blah 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 blah, blah. i'm watching and i was like if i met this guy like you're a decade do you like if i seen someone else doing that that i went to school with i was like what a fucking tool but i was like you have to do the sort of the content the dance. yeah yeah it's a whole part of it now but uh what i loved under that video was i introduced myself as a northern irish comedian now my name's sean mike levy i'm from newry people from newry probably don't like that i said it's from northern ireland if you know what i mean Aye. and some guy commented on her because uh it was like um Oh, I hope your podcast is called the Prodcast. <laughs> I was like, I love this country, like, and the only reason I said Northern Irish was because I only do gigs in Northern Ireland, uh, and, I, and I don't give a fuck. Do you know what I mean? Like, say North of Ireland next time. Yeah, I was just like, Jesus Christ, you're like everyone's a fucking, especially when you do like them sort of like TikToks and reels, and just go to people you don't know. Uh, it's different if you're doing other like just a post and goes out all your followers, but when you're doing that like bigger reach and all, it's like. Fucking any maniac can go see it. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Comment under it knife. Yeah, find that out the fucking shit. <laughs> see, the other thing as well, when someone's sitting there taking a video of you, it's all well and good when you're sitting in a comedy club and it's like a nice atmosphere. Mm -hmm. People have had a few drinks. You know, there's the infectious laughter of the crowd. Yeah. Someone takes a video and shows their mate, oh, look at, and it's a shitty granny video on a mobile phone. Yeah. Their mate's going to be going, Who, who's that dickhead? Like, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't, it's like people. <sighs> It's like people though that go to like big concerts as well. Like I seen there's a guy Dave that was doing. Do you know who Dave? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. So Dave was doing. It was his O2 London show. I think it was Aaron McCann that actually had the video up. And just everyone was standing with their phones out. Aye. I'm not gonna be that guy. Like, shouldn't have your phone out. But you're never gonna watch it again. And well, funny you say that because I did. Um, I went down to Little Sims in Dublin mm -hmm. in about November, and as you say, I'm not gonna be that guy. It says put your phone away, David. Yeah. But. I'm like I need to be in the moment, yeah. and it. But I like I took so many. I just yeah. couldn't help. You can't help it. Her yeah. performance was so good. But actually, we were sort of at a balcony that just sort of overlooked the stage. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the Academy in Dublin, and uh, the videos and the sound quality are actually really good. Yeah. But I've got so many videos from music gigs I've been to where it's just like this distorted noise. Yeah. You wouldn't know what band or mm -hmm. song it is like. But even I just find I hate when someone goes to you like there's a guy I work with fuck me and he always goes oh did you see that video during the week and then he'll pull it out and it's like a three minute long video yeah. and you're standing you're like yeah okay yeah like even if it's like a really well made video you're just like I don't know what you want me to do here for three minutes <laughs> yeah, like, I know. I'm not in the mood to laugh at this right now they're so sitting in work like fuck off <laughs> there was one fella who's like really sort of um, blunt that I work with and one of the other guys was like here here would you would you see this and he went to show him this video and he just he gave it about 10 seconds and he goes see to be honest I don't really give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> it was just like I need to start taking that attitude yeah. like, I, oh, I would love to be like that I'd be too nice I'd be, I sit there if someone showed me an hour long podcast oh, I, go, oh yes yeah that's, that's great yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, but I'd so I'd, and I've had actually people in the audience after a gig showing me photos on their phones and all of you no of, i can't remember <laughs> what it was but and i've had people come up there after gigs and they're like oh i really like that was so good and you see that bit there's a story um and i'm just like oh for fuck's yeah. sake like and you know it's not so bad if it's a gig in belfast and you've got like you know a 15 minute drive home mm -hmm. But when you're fucking, you know, an hour and a half away yeah, from home, to having to go down the motorway yeah. at like midnight and someone's like, hey, man, I've got a funny story. Like, yeah. OK. Yeah. Yeah. yeah obviously, you're obviously far more established than fucking most people I hang around with in comedy as well. But like you like, do you get that people like trying material out on you and like pitching things at you and I'm trying to get because there's a thing I've realized that like people that don't do stand up comedy get a kick out of trying to get a laugh out of a stand up comedian. I, and you're like, oh, my God. I think sometimes 
you do it without even realizing mm-hmm. and I'll probably do it at times as well but my missus actually said to me I think it was about like I think I'd done maybe one gig mm-hmm. and she said listen just want to make this clear if you're going to be doing stand up comedy never test material on me and it was kind of <laughs> the best thing because yeah. I, I, she was just like I don't want to hear it mm-hmm. and it's it was a really good thing because you could say I could tell you a joke and you could be just sitting there going right okay mm-hmm. and fake a laugh Yeah. but I could tell that to a room full of 20 people Yeah. And five people might think it's funny, and fifteen mm-hmm. might. But when the five people start laughing, you're yeah. like, right, there's something there. Yeah, yeah. So um, Jordan does it. Oh, I, I've told him so many times, don't do it. Like Jordan I'm, gets the book out and goes. Yeah, Jordan's like, what do you think? Because like a lot of the time, I would be driving the gigs with him, mm-hmm. and he goes, I've thought of this bit, and I, <laughs> and I'm just like, you feel obliged to laugh, yeah, or go, that's brilliant, and I'm, and then there's times like, meh. But I, I always say to him, look, just because I'm not necessarily in the frame of mind to laugh at that yeah. doesn't mean that, you know. Oh, so you've gotten, well, I suppose you have a good relationship, but you would turn around and tell them and be like, I don't get that. Or like, so, but the thing is, right. But this, see, this nine is times thing. out of ten, it does make me laugh. Yeah, like, that, yeah, that's the thing. But the thing, right, what I find is like, I always run everything. I've told a story every episode in this podcast. Awesome, my girlfriend, brilliant human being, wonderful girl, no sense of humor. Right. Don't laugh at anything unless it's like fucking a donkey kicking someone in the balls. Do that sense of humor, just stupid shit, Classic right? Comedy, though. Yeah, right. How can you replicate that? How can you compete? I don't know. But uh, she just no sense of humor. Anything I could say, I've done, done rooms. Some far first gig I did back with you and all, like it was really good, brilliant and all. And then the one that I had that got the biggest laugh of the night, the bit I do about like, the Galgor and all. She's like, oh, I hate that bit. Makes you cringe. I was like, yeah, because you know me, and I'm doing this fucking weird motion on stage, and she's, I just hate it. But I'll test stuff out in her and. The premise of what I'm doing is I'm like saying, do you get the joke? I'm not saying to find me funny. I'm saying, do you get where I'm going? Uh, do you see the yep. bit in it? Which is probably in hindsight something you can only do with comedians. Uh-huh. So when Jordan pitches it to you, you're like, I see the joke. I yep. get what I get what it is. I might not necessarily laugh it out, but she'll just sit there and just go, not funny. I go, but you see what I'm doing? She goes, no. Yeah. <laughs> just like, I'm like, right, well, go do it anyway. Fuck you. <laughs> so that's the thing. I just pretty much anything new. You've sort of got to trust your gut. Yeah. And and that's the thing it's being funny in conversation is completely different to making an audience laugh mm-hmm. like so i always just like fuck it there's no point in me saying that to someone do yep. you think this is although th- it, th- it is very tempting mm-hmm. to do it um and even on the drive up last night like, so ross mitchell and donnie kingston were in the car with me and we sort of we're chatting about various things and then we got there and ross was like you see that story i was telling you in the car i'm just gonna try that on stage and it worked really well oh, okay, yeah, yeah. um so and then there was like i just a slip of the tongue last week i referred referred to vladimir putin as vladimir puts <laughs> <laughs> i was like so it's just like i'm just gonna try and fucking squeeze that in somewhere yeah. <laughs> um and i managed to sort of get a few laughs on stage about that last night so what like because i I'd said this to Donnie and Ross in the car and we all laughed about it and I'm like fucking so I think there's potential to develop like yeah. you know a minute out of that yeah. rather than just like uh, Vladimir Putz yeah. imagine that big Presbyterian <laughs> psychopath um, <laughs> that's, that's sort of where like some of the best comedy is born in that fucking stupid slip up of mm. something you meant to say you said it wrong and you're like holy shit yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like caveman discovering fire it's like what? holy fuck how do you do that but you do want as well to just test stuff you know, you run it by someone, especially another comedian. There's always the temptation to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I do find it quite annoying where people are like, all right, I've got, what do you think of this bit? Yeah. And I've had a conversation with Luke McGibbon because I think he gets it a lot because he gives so many people yeah. their first gig. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was it Ross or Donnie was saying last night about they got like a three minute like voice mail from another comedian basically what yeah i think they sent it through like whatsapp or something um yeah so i don't know i Did... couldn't think of anything worse than sitting there and recording a mundane voice in a room being like you think that's hilarious yeah exactly it's not gonna be exactly you know and you don't know what is going on at the other end of the person you send it to like you yeah. know they're walking their dog or something they're going what the fuck is this <laughs> but that's like everyone that sends voice notes i'm not a big voice note person but i've had people that do it i'm like you have time 
to yeah. fucking text it out. I know. It's like, I think, actually, <laughs> go back to your potty rap reps. I think I've seen him do it. I fucking skin and he's like, here, um, just jumping on here really quickly because it'll be quicker to like, you know, to say this than text it but uh, basically what I'm going to say is I'm, as I said you know it'll be quicker for, and by the time you actually get to the point you're like holy fuck Merry Christmas yeah, yeah. yeah you're like Jesus Christ but it's it's like oh I can't stand it because I never I listen to a lot of podcasts but it's only when I have like my headphones on I'm not going to walk around 24-7 with headphones on yeah. like a serial killer like, uh, <laughs> so to actually walk around like that do the, do yeah. the whole phone thing like it's, that's the other thing about so working outside like sometimes when it's pissing down and I've got these big thermal gloves on and the headphones in, and you just hear like a message come through. And I'm like, is it worth me <laughs> peeling these gloves yeah. off, unzipping my wet coat, digging in? And like, someone's just like, how's it going? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's yeah, the, stupid the voice friends. messages can be quite handy, and Jordan uses them quite a lot. But the thing is, I'll be sitting there with my kids, and there'll be like, <laughs> A 45 second long message and I'm yeah. like, I'm going to have to leave the room to listen to this. Uh, yeah, I've definitely had that before. Like, you, the, there's Even the people who you get on the phone like that, do you see a phone call and you're like, I can't sit in the room and take this. Like, you oh, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Change it up. Uh, I suppose we touched on Ukraine. We may as well, we may as well cover some hot topics. Why not? Oh, I. Yeah. So, uh, Keep it light. I, I, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, there's no better place to start than this. The, actually, I didn't know this, but the president of Ukraine was a stand-up comedian. Yeah, yeah. What a nice segue that was. I know. Was mad, like... Um, I don't really know much about him, but if, if you were to like say, so obviously he's went through the stand up act in present role. So was he an actual stand up or was he like a comedy actor? No, Do I think know? he was an actual stand up stand up, and uh, then he got into acting. Joe sort of that like. Uh, like that American I sort of like do you remember they used to do like you know you used to be a stand up and then you'd get into like a fucking Aye. sitcom sort yeah, of thing yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you'd go into whatever uh-huh. the, well maybe not politics yeah, <laughs> yeah. but uh, who do you think over here that's in the stand up scene could maybe make that progression <laughs> that's a very interesting question like locally yeah like someone that's on the scene here like fuck doing stand up uh... I know who I want it to be but it, <laughs> it's the worst answer ever <laughs> Yeah, I would want it to be someone like Adam Lachlan. It's just metal. <laughs> or Mickey Bartlett. Like, yeah. just... I was thinking, like, Paddy McDonald's just fucking let him go absolutely loose. Like, just going to see him. Fucking cunt. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I want. Paddy would, like... I find... There's something about Paddy McDonald. Like, cause it, I remember when I started, people going on, oh, he's a mad bastard, and he, he gets his dick out to show you and stuff. Yeah. like. And then any time I've ever met him, right... Mm-hmm. He's very funny and very nice, but I find him really reassuring and calming or something as well. That was my experience with him. I only met him once that new gig, and he was just, he was so like, are you loving stand-up? Aye. Do you love the whole thing? He's like, that's what I was like, and I was like, this is not what I expected yeah. from this conversation whatsoever. So the first, like, I made my debut in the uh, the Empire in like October or something, mm-hmm. and I was sort of expecting to do about 10 minutes, and stupidly, I didn't message Jade that runs it yeah. to say, can you confirm how long I've got? Mm-hmm. And then on the night, she was like, right, five minutes. And I was like, what? What? I, uh, yeah, I know. Oh, and I was shit. like, she goes, right, well, five to, five to eight minutes. Okay. Right? And I was like, that's slightly more. But all of a sudden, I was looking at what I'd prepared on my set list, going, how the fuck am I going to do this? Mm-hmm. And I was starting to get, like, slightly hysterical. And then, who was on this? Emer McGuire was on stage. And me and Patty, Mc, Patty McDonald was MC. And we were, like, backstage. And I was like, how the fuck am I going to do this in five minutes? And I goes, Here. Just contact. Just go out there. You'll kill it. <laughs> <laughs> he just completely chilled me out. I convinced you of that. I think you'd be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, Paddy, yeah, Paddy would be a good, uh, good politician. <laughs> just cut the bullshit. But then, um, yeah. Also, it would be nice to see someone who's just mental and. Mental and like one hundred percent, yeah, one hundred percent hilarious. Like Mickey, he's just the only person that never stops being funny. Yeah, I think yeah. on the local scene, I just can't turn it off. Like, yeah, yeah, not at all. I think he knows that too. I've never met him. But I just get the vibe from his podcast and everyone that's ever told me about it. He just he can't help it. Like he it, just has to be constantly getting the butt end of a joke out somewhere. Like, I, I know it's uh, funny. Sometimes it depends on whose company I'm in. You can be like that, but then other times you're just like exhausted or yeah. whatever but Mickey just seems to be every time I see him he's just got a joke on the tip yeah. of his tongue look see that's something that's something I find like really difficult from getting into stand up like you want to get on well with everybody but you don't want to be a fucking kiss horse and licking off the paper yeah. and going in and trying to be the funniest person in the room like I just I'd rather just not speak than try to be that guy to be like oh so and then run material past people uh-huh. and like try and make jokes around everyone like going up to the pal there before Christmas I was going like every Monday night 
and you just try and I was like every week just go up and maybe chat meet one new face or chat to somebody Die, that's like, what I was doing it's, as well it's, like. it's, it's, it's overwhelming there's not many people and people sit in their circles and stuff and you're like holy f- how do you get in like where's your in like yeah and I suppose the best answer to that is just go on stage and be funny because uh, that, that's what I found like if you actually go and do well they'll come up to you yeah well, well done or if you do shit people don't want to talk to you uh, <laughs> but then the other thing about that is when you're when you're going on a regular basis the whatever night whether mm-hmm. it's an open mic night or a more established night you know you're building the, the, there's also like a wee sort of network of like local comedy fans yeah. who don't necessarily perform but everyone sort of knows them and, y- yes exactly uh, there's something really nice about that as well because then just by word of mouth you mm-hmm. know you can get a bit of a reputation yeah. of, um, just by talking to people and then you say to them oh I'm actually on here next week and they're mm-hmm. like oh I'll come, I'll come down and watch yeah. you sort of thing because one of those things I've said since getting on it, like I didn't, I don't know how much you knew about the Northern Comedy scene before you got into it, but I knew fucking nothing. Like, Me I didn't too. even know the big, the big names that uh, were doing well and stuff like that. But like since getting into it, like the talent and the fucking just all around the country is unreal. I know, like I know, unbelievable. And it's just you hear people going on about, um, you know, these. There, there's obviously more established acts on the local scene, but there's some people that. In the five years since I started doing comedy, I've seen them do less than 10 gigs. Mm. I just thought they're fucking, why are they not like on live at the Apollo? Mm -hmm. You know, there's just certain people that you wish devoted more time to it. Yeah. Um, And they would just be so, so good. And they are really good, but Mm -hmm. some people just aren't that fun. You know, they they do it to scratch an itch once in a while. Like, Uh and have, have you met Paul Moon? No. No, Paul is a really nice guy. He sort of ran the accidental comedy night and accidental mm-hmm. theatre. And he would have been more into improv. But he did a, a like he did a handful of stand up comedy sets about three or four years ago and they were absolutely brilliant. Mm-hmm. But I think he's done a couple more recently. I think he did the Pav last week or the week before. Um and someone last night was saying how good they are. Mm-hmm. But like I could name about twenty people like that that just you're like, why are you not doing this? I all don't the do time? it enough. Like yeah. 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 Um, what was it for you that made you want to like keep like did you want to build it into like a career or is it like I uh, know it's I hate talking to people like this because it makes you just sound big headed. <laughs> you're like, Oh, I want to be alive with Apollo but like what was it for you or is it just like a get out of the house thing or uh, to keep doing it? Part of it was like you know, obviously, when when you have a, a brilliant gig, there's mm-hmm. that high of like, right, I want to do that again. Yeah. But then on the other hand, there was there was the really bad gigs I had at the start, and I'm like I've embarrassed myself here, and like I know I can do a lot better. Yeah. And just trying to to build them up, but then also, sort of, so I did my first gig in 2017, but 2018, all of a sudden, there seemed to be lots more wee nights mm-hmm. and chances. Okay, for yeah. new comedians um so I, w- I probably just started doing more and more gigs and taking them as they came mm-hmm. like and i just trying to get as many as i could and then like jordan and i were sort of he would be like oh here look do you fancy coming to Derry? i'm doing the chicken box next week do you mm-hmm. want to and I'd, I'd be like i've never done a gig in Derry. like might as well were you friends before that point or just met through no comedy? no it, yeah we we just met through comedy and um but as you said about going down every Monday night, even mm-hmm. when you're not performing. So I I would go every Monday without fail because yeah. I was living at Rosetta. But I noticed Jordan was there. Every, I'd never spoken to him, but he was always sitting up at the front. Yeah. And um, and then all of a sudden he was on the bill one night and I just went up to him afterwards and was like, here, mate, that, that was really mm-hmm. good. And then, yeah. and then there's just been all these weird coincidences since, like, we sort of got the note. I remember we were driving home from Derry one night and he was telling me about like um after his dad had died and the mum was selling the house out in Sandfield and da 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 and he was talking and talking and talking. I was like, Whereabouts in Sandfield was it? He was just I was like, I was fucking selling that house. I remember being Shut there. Up. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I can remember being there doing the viewings. Holy fuck. For, uh, like like I said, like, I've met your mom. I used to phone your mom every other day. Like <laughs> um and then like we stopped so there's just all these weird coincidences like he, so we were both in the same boarding school although like he was like 12 years after me or something yeah. um we were both living in Dunfermline at the, well I was living in Reside just outside Dunfermline but he was living just around the corner from my office mm-hmm. when we were in Dun, Dunfermline um and then the other weird one 
we were going to New Zealand and got him to stay in the house to catch it. Uh, <laughs> and then my my neighbour was this like elderly woman who lived on her own, but her nephew used mm-hmm. to come and visit her every so often. And it turns out the nephew was Jordan's <laughs> dad's best man. They said, oh, I can't believe you know Richard. He's my yeah. dad's best man. It's like, just all these wee yeah. things kept cropping up. So now we're lovers and best friends. <laughs> but he, he does, he genuinely, like he looks after my kids and he does yeah. stuff about it in the stand up. I, I was laughing so hard that day. I seen you went to Belfast Zoo and then there's a photo of Jordan in amongst it. And I think, I can't remember someone commented on it or like someone shared it. I was like, is that Jordan? Yeah. <laughs> Your kids at Belfast Zoo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And that's it's really weird as well because they um my kids are so shy mm-hmm. and um especially with adults like and like there's friends of mine and even like my brothers and uh sister mm-hmm. they've known all their life yeah. and they're really shy but as soon as they met jordan they were just like all right like that's, just completely yeah. comfortable and that's able so to strange. have a full conversation with them like that's so strange i find though when i to relate it back to the comments again like you're starting out i think you need someone like that joe someone go here how about you come yep. here and do this like uh-huh. i i always said thanks to darren for all the gigs he'd give me down around your because uh-huh. he knows i'm from there he's from there and stuff like that like but you definitely need that sort of not an in but you know you know what i'm trying to say yeah. like that sort of just connection to sort of give you a wee help up and sort of get you even more but your arm around you yeah and i just having a wingman and it's someone that you're at the very start you're sort of um you're going through the highs and lows together and helping each other get more gigs mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, so would you be a bit like that with Kieran? I would be a lot like that with Kieran. Now, I fully understand Kieran's 10 times the comic I am. And there's no question about that at the gigs. I, for no, a guy that's no. done, no, for a guy that's done 10 gigs, I'm like, he, every time I see him, I goes, I fucking hate how good you are. I, that's all I ever said. And I was like, you do ahead. And there was one night in the pub and Luke comic was one of the two you're going to need to fill because, you know, someone's not shown, the newcomer hasn't shown. So five to six minutes. And I was like, oh, fuck me. So we flipped for it and kieran got it and the next thing kieran just pulled up this fucking microsoft word on his phone is like going through everything and, da, 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 da. and i was like oh, i've seen kieran before hopefully he does well whatever and then he just comes out with it was six months of brand new stuff never seen that he'd done before and i've seen him two or three times before this, this is when he's six gig and he just blew the roof off someone came out to him afterward and was like what's your twitter i need to follow you that was that funny and i was like i hate you it's yeah just, but i i love him for that because he because i'm a lazy cunt when it comes to writing stuff and he's always writing stuff uh-huh. so he pushes me on to like actually keep writing and keep doing new stuff and he would be the yeah he'd be the guy if i get a gig i'll recommend him if he gets a gig uh, he'll yeah, recommend yeah. me and stuff like that but that's what i mean and it's it's nice that you're like and as i said i think he's a fucking brilliant funny funny dude like but it's good that you're on the same technical level as like joe starting and yeah like coming up sort of come up at the same time uh uh-huh. because we were talking to another guy who's around the same level and um i'll tell you afterwards who it was but uh he, he basically, <laughs> very he, diplomatic he, he, yeah he basically said afterwards he goes he's at pretty much the exact same level as us and goes don't worry i'll bring you up with me you like is right, okay. you're on head and you're just like yeah holy fuck right <laughs> interesting yeah. so uh, it's good and it's a good dynamic too because kieran doesn't drive and i drive so i just take him everywhere i ah, you're a chauffeur yeah i just i just bring him i was like mate i'm gonna start buying you driving lessons like it's getting to that stage of the relationship because we're both doing what are we doing we're doing that roast in up in delacroix, delacroix. Uh-huh. and then we're doing which will be fun because we both like each other going off to roast each other but i think the best way to do that and I think the best way to do that, I said to him, is maybe do it as a writing exercise together. Uh huh. Because we've only met each other, you know, we only known each other a couple of months. Like, you need to give each other some ammo. Like, Bruna Diamond and Bruna McCauley did that. They had, like, a right one. And, oh, God, it was, like, I'll tell you, off. I was, like, keep, I was like, keep a few for the back pocket as well. Like, don't throw everything exactly, together, but, yeah. like, let's work through it and fucking build it up to something. Yeah. Like, there's a really good opportunity to do it, I think. And then we're in PVs on the Moy on Paddy's Day. And I was like, if you think... That's a really good lineup, isn't oh, it? It's fucking unreal. Like, <laughs> it's actually... Have you met Talal? Uh, no, no, no. I've, I've heard brilliant. Jordan was saying he's yeah, brilliant, getting brilliant, brilliant gay. And he, yeah, he recommended that one to me. That's why, like, there's a lot of... Since it's obviously COVID, there's a lot of people wanting to get into it. Uh-huh. So everyone that's getting into it, I try, I try my best to, like, sort of chat to them. Like, yeah. do them newcomers nights. I love uh-huh. going to them and meeting everyone. Be like, oh, yeah, we're all the same level. And I, yeah. It's great crack. But, uh... Yeah, so we're, we're doing that. And I was like, if you think I'm driving the whole way to Oma on Paddy's Day, I'm not taking a drink just because I have to drive you fucking, <laughs> your wee ass there. Yeah. Think again. Get the Guinness here, so, man. Yeah, I was going to say, if there's any fucking, anyone that doesn't celebrate the holiday and wants to drive to yeah. Oma, <laughs> give us a shout. Uh, we'll buy you a ticket in or something. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Why not? We'll sort something out. But yeah, as I was saying, yeah, it's nice to have someone like that. Like, it's nice to have, like, Joe, that level of, like, coming up with you and sort of seeing each other both doing well. Because I think I remember hearing back that you started with Robbie McShane. I, uh, Robbie, I think Robbie and I did our second gigs together. Yeah. But again, like, 
just watching what you were saying there about Kieran, I remember like just watching Robbie and going, fuck, hey, like he is so good. Yeah. Like, you know, when he had done about 10 gigs and, but everyone was saying that, like, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, Robbie, uh, again, it was the case of like, I think we did our second gigs together and then I didn't see him for a few weeks and he had done like, you know, 20 and I, I was still waiting to do my third. That's so, that's, well, I suppose it is infuriating. Yeah, you're literally, that's annoying. Drew, <laughs> you're just like, I want to do this as much as possible. You yeah. can't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sort of having kids and stuff, that's my, my excuse. Yeah. Blame those wee bastards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're really limited. Yeah. You, you know I cut them in? <laughs> huh? Yeah, I would have been on live with the Apollo. I would have had a Netflix special if it wasn't for them. Like, um, very good. Uh, I think we'll start to wrap this up because it's been, uh, I just love talking to comics on this. Yeah. It's actually, I've had a load of fucking sports people on and, and they're all decades, but anyway, but, see, talking to comics, it's just, I do it all day, every day, but we have to, see we have to get, we have to get back on with our Saturdays. Yeah, with, exactly. With things to do, place to be. But uh, anything else sort of been, well, obviously the Limelight Show is the big one coming up. Obviously you've had the gigs. I, I think it's class to see that you've been, ob- you've sort of been doing the Empire good and not regular, but you've had a good Just twice. Gig. I need to get on actually yeah. and see if I can get another one booked in. Because I've actually heard, and this is just the whispered one around, I've heard it's quite, you know, it's quite cutthroat if the, if you don't do well, you'll not be back. Sort of thanks to the fact that you've been back is probably nice. Yeah, <laughs> nice I know, because I was slightly, uh, I couldn't believe as like as soon as it came off, they were mm-hmm. like, we're going to get you back to do 20 minutes. Um, cool. Was it really hard for you then to drop into five? Because obviously you're used to doing longer sets now. Yeah, right? it w- but see, I used to be really comfortable for a long time with 10 minutes was like my golden, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and then it just sort of got longer and longer and longer. So when somebody was like right, eight minutes um, and I'd actually done quite a bit of new material that was working really well. So mm-hmm. I sort of thought, right, I can just do the greatest hits out of that 15 <laughs> minutes lose all that and throw that out yeah so um yeah but yeah the empire like that first night that it was patty mcdonald patty raff and emer mcguire and the audience was just yeah. as soon as you walked in you knew it was going to be mm-hmm. a good night like mm-hmm. so i uh, i was lucky to make my debut and you know yeah have all that in my favor because mm-hmm. i think for a lot of people well for i think for me and other upcomers we also about like the empire is like probably comedy mecca of belfast you know, uh, like it's, the, it's the big stage the big oh, massive I, room like everyone's it's the oldest like, comedy yeah. night in belfast and it, like yeah and it's the one where you've probably the best chance of getting a five minute spot like you're not going to get five minutes at a limelight show do you know what i mean uh, like that doesn't exist anymore so yeah it's the one that's i think it's the one everyone looks up and is like fuck when someone actually gets in the door you're like yes it's, <laughs> it's, oh, a, it's I, a win for the team like you know yeah. everyone's sort of back and behind but uh, anything else coming up anything else sort of happening or in the world of, in the world of being just uh, buy tickets for Shane Todd's tour because I'll be doing support on that. Oh, as right, well. yeah, very good. So uh, looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, suited and booted in the limelight. Me, Johnny Bo, Karen Franco, we're bullying him into doing yeah. 10 minutes. Drag him and uh, Diona Doherty's going to MC it. Which, oh, uh, you're having an MC as well, yeah? Yeah, oh, so okay, she's cool. going to sort of introduce us at the start of the night. And um, yeah, it'll be good fun. Yeah. I can't wait. I I will actually. I sh- should be there. Yeah, I should be there. I have my ticket. <laughs> I buy my ticket and then be like, "Will I be going?" Yes, I will be going. Because I, I always do it whenever there's like a comic thing. I, fuck, you wouldn't believe the amount of tickets I bought things and can't go. Do you Same here. I just I love supporting things and then I buy the tickets. Like I can't actually go to that fuck's here. I know. <laughs> and then I always like say to whoever promoting the night, I'm like, "Look, do you want to do a flipping giveaway or something?" Yeah. And they always like, "Oh no, I'll get you a refund." And I'm like, "No, you don't need to. No, no, like, yeah, I'm no, happy no. to support it." Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but Ian, thanks so much for coming on. It's been an absolute blast. As I said, love talking stand up, love talking comedy Thank stuff. Thank you for Best having of luck me. with the show and the limelight with Johnny and Kieran and everyone that's going to be there. I guarantee it's going to be a fantastic night. I hope so. I know, it definitely will be. It'll be a brilliant night. Uh, but yeah, where can we find you? Social medias and stuff like that? Uh, Ian Thompson, etc. There is no P in my surname. It's I A N T H O M S O N E T C. Tom Shun. Not Thompson, Tom. no, no pay. That's no, unnecessary. Not, not like the club, no. No, that's uh, <laughs> as I said to William Thompson. You just have an unnecessary pay. What are you trying to compensate for? <laughs> to which he replied, "My tiny penis." Uh, <laughs> so Ian Thompson, etc. That's on Twitter and Instagram, and Ian Thompson comedy on Facebook. Yeah. And I don't do TikTok because I'm ancient. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> stay away from it. It's a fucking devil. It's a devil. You get people fucking asking you to do the broadcast. That's <laughs> that's about the height of my TikTok fucking shit. But yeah, anyway, guys, thanks so much for listening. Thanks again for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. If you've enjoyed this episode, leave a like, comment, subscribe, go check out the game stuff. Go get tickets for the show, and I'll see you all again in the next one. Thank you. Bye.